Uh, so let me go ahead and welcome you guys to the gun deck. It is called the gun deck for obvious reasons. The guns that are on this deck. We have 32 24 pound long guns on this deck. What that number means is 32, the number of guns. 24 refers to the pound of shot, the cannonball that is fired out of each one of her barrels. Each one of these guns has a range of about 1,200 yards. At 500 yards, you can penetrate the hull of an enemy up to two foot thick. But it's noted in the age of sale, most battles took place at 50 yards or less. Half a football field away, that's how close we would have been. Each one of these guns off the carriage, which means just the black part, weighs 5,800 pounds. On the carriage, meaning the red part and the ropes and everything included, weighs 6,500 pounds, which is the equivalent basically to a Ford Explorer. So if you guys can imagine, we're basically standing in a small parking garage. We're surrounded by 32 Ford Explorers. That's pretty much what's going on. Uh, each one of these guns was operated by 9 to 14 men and boys. And when I say boys, I actually do mean boys. How old are you? Eight. The youngest sailor we ever had on board the USS Constitution was eight years old. <laughs> but all the money he would make would go right back home to mom and dad. I don't know if you guys want to sign him up because they weren't upstairs. <laughs> we'll be giving tours next week. Sound like a plan? He's shaking his head. All right. But all jokes aside, we've got nine to 14 men and boys per gun, 32 guns. How many sailors do you think we have on board grand total? 192. 192. That's a good guess, but a little bit more than that. A little more than that, Brian. Anyone got a guess? Oh, that. 600. That's a good guess. 450 to 500 men served on board the USS Constitution. Now, out of those 450 to 500 men, how many of those men do you think were cooks? 100. One. One. That is exactly correct. Now, I would not call him a cook by any means at all. Usually, it was old salty sailor who had been at sea so long he couldn't do anything else. Sometimes he was a young spry puppy who had been injured in battle. Either way, the guys that outlived their usefulness, so the Navy gave him some food to see what it could come up with. So it would uh, have been a very unique taste, to say the least. During the age of sale, we didn't have refrigerators, we didn't have freezers, so there's a couple options of what we could do to preserve our food for long deployments, for long underways. We could pickle, salt, or dry our food. Most common on board the USS Constitution would be heavily salting our food. This barrel right behind you guys, that barrel right there, that is called the steep tub. Now the heavily salted beef, cod, pork, whatever we had, was brought up the day prior to consumption, placed in that tub along with fresh water. Every couple of hours the fresh water was drained out, more fresh water was put on top of it. It was a 24 hour cycle, so they were trying to leach as much of the salt out as possible. And they couldn't get 100% of the salt out. But any amount of salt out is better 100% of the salt in, so that's what they were going for. In addition to that, sailors were given rice. They were given beans, they were given various vegetables, fresh fruit when we made pork calls, uh, a stew. And they were also given a thing called ship's bread. Now this wasn't store-bought bread. This wasn't mom's homemade kind of bread around the edges, but you're still going to eat it because mom made it with love bread. This was, the uh, easiest way to describe it, was the consistency of a hockey puck. It was <laughs> double baked and without yeast. I mean, it was flour and water only, and it was thrown in the ship's camboose. Uh, speaking of, I didn't touch on the camboose, did I? Nope. Okay, the ship's camboose, I do apologize for that. That's the ship's camboose. That was where the food was cooked. That's where the cannonballs were heated up for engagement, so they fit better in the board of the gun. Uh, that's where the sailors were allowed to smoke, and that's where the ship's armor would do blacksmith work. But that's where the ship's bread was made. It was flour and water only, and it was thrown in that guy twice for way too long each time. Now, they, you wanted it hard like a hockey puck, hard like wood, so that way the rats cannot get into it. They would break their teeth. So that way the bugs, the weevils, cannot get into it, so it would preserve for long deployments. Neat thing the museum actually has on display over the Constitution Museum, ship's bread that's left over from the Civil War. And it's in the exact same state it was when we originally made it, which is kind of cool. So now we have this bread that's so hard, the sailors can't even get into it without breaking their teeth. How are they going to eat it? Well, the sailors should actually wrap it in their neckerchief, beat it on the overhead, beat it on the deck, beat it on one of those long guns so they can break it down into small enough pieces. And they would put it in their stew so they get it soft enough to actually be able to chew it without breaking their teeth. 